Hello, my name is Alex Isles, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about Bjorn Ironside, one of the mythological leaders of the great heathen host. Welcome back. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about Bjorn Ironside, and like in the other videos, I've used Bjorn from the TV series Vikings because it's probably the one you're most used to when you think of Bjorn Ironside. Now, when you think of the great heathen host, you may have watched the TV series Vikings or maybe The Last Kingdom, and so you know the Scandinavians and you imagine them fighting against the Anglo-Saxons in these battles and all of that sort of stuff. And you've got the famous sons of Ragnar Lofbrok, who is Bjorn, Hubba, um, Ivar, and also alongside this as well, Halfdan. Now, the actual historical characters are very interesting because Bjorn is a historical character, but it's unlikely that he was actually a member of the great heathen host. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But what we see when we actually look at this historical character is that later on, he's actually rolled into a lot of the myths and legends that are associated with that period. And in the, sort of the 12th century and in the 14th century, his name is associated with the others that becomes a part of the legends of Ragnar Lofbrook. Now, if you like the sound of that, why don't you subscribe now? Because I've got plenty more content like this on the channel and I think you'll enjoy it here. But let's get right into it and start off looking at the historical Bjorn Ironside. So Bjorn is first mentioned in 855 when, and this is where we have to sort of jump into the mythology a little bit, apparently his father Ragnar becomes king and therefore is banished. What we do know is that he's then included on raids on Frisia and alongside this as well, West Francia, with another leader called Sitrig. Now, when he raids those areas, he sets up on the Seine. He is beaten by Charles the Bold in 885 AD. And when he's beaten by Charles the Bold, he then swears fealty to him. He then sets up a base for himself, though, in Ossel in France. And so when he sets up a base for himself in Ossel, he sweared fealty to Charles. But we don't know how loyal he actually is, because in July of 858, he then revolts against him and he's besieged by Charles. And when he's besieged by Charles, he is only saved because Charles' brother, Louis the German, attacks Charles and then he has to lift the siege to go and fight him. So because of that, uh, Bjorn is then saved and he's able to then go and do a lot more of the raiding that he would prefer to do. So from 859 to 861, he raids Iberia, Spain, the south of France, and even goes into Italy as well, and they capture Pisa. Uh, but then they lose 40 ships in the storm, and they end on going back into Italy, and they raid Luni. And they're very clever because they're besieging it, and the Roman walls around the settlement are too strong for the Scandinavians. They can't get inside. So because of this, the leader of the Scandinavians is a guy called Halstein, and he pretends to be at death's door and asks the bishop inside there to be baptized so that he can become a sort of a deathbed baptism. Please, can I become a Christian? So he's allowed with a small retinue to make his way into the church and he is then prepared to be baptized before he dies. But just before he dies, he leaps up and then from there, he then surprises the bishop and they hack their way to the gates, take um, the hold of the gates, open them and let in the rest of the army and they take it. But when they take Luni, they are surprised because it's not actually Rome. They had got themselves mixed up and they thought they were assaulting Rome. And so because they thought they were assaulting Rome, they then realized that the Romans have probably got a lot more fight in them than they realized they leave. From there, they then return back. And as they return back, later on in history, we know that Bjorn was shipwrecked in England. And when he was shipwrecked in England, he then somehow ends up back in Frisia and he dies in Frisia. So this is a really interesting one because we don't have him mentioned as a part of the great heathen host. But later on in the 14th century, he is then added into the Icelandic sagas as one of the sons of Ragnar Lofbrok. And alongside this as well, he is then his name Ironside is probably added by Saxto Germanicus in the 1200s. Because Ironside is actually associated with Edmund Ironside, who is a king of England. So it's not actually a Scandinavian name. He becomes, through all of these myths and legends, 
the father of the House Munso, and this could be a real thing. The historical Bjorn Ironside may have been the ancestor of this because we see his Eric, his son, and Eric, his nephew, both go on to become kings of Sweden within the stories. And then when they become kings of Sweden, House Munso is then a very important house of Sweden going into the Middle Ages, and they claim descent from Bjorn Ironside. But again, we've got this mythological Viking who actually is more famous for his raids on France and his raids on Italy and the Mediterranean and wasn't actually involved in warfare in England. So I find that a really interesting one right there. So if I've destroyed any dreams of you, I didn't mean to, but I hope you loved in learning about this historical character, this interesting character himself, Bjorn Ironside who is the Scandinavian warlord who becomes a Viking and then basically through wars with the Franks then ends up in the Mediterranean, causes all sorts of trouble in the Mediterranean, attacks Italy itself, actually does some amazing deception which in the TV series Vikings Ragnar does and so when he uh, pretends to be dead in the TV series that's actually Bjorn Ironside's compatriots who actually do that in the real historical um, accounts and then from there he is shipwrecked in England and then ends up back in Frisia where he passes away. So that's the story right there. If you have enjoyed, please do subscribe and alongside that as well, if you would like to support me further in the description below, I do have a link to both my Patreon and alongside that as well, a coffee account. And you can support me if you like, you don't have to though. I really hope you've enjoyed the video overall though, and that you'll come back and watch another one in the future. Until next time though, stay safe and well, and thank you so much for watching.